Hello everyone, this is Taki from BigHeadTalker.com and welcome to my studio. I'm here to do a reasonably quick review of the Konica Hexar AF, which officially it is, the AF was added because it was the Konica Hexar RF, the rangefinder. People didn't know which one you were referring to, but really this is the Konica Hexar and this is the classic version and there were various models of this, but they didn't change too much overall. And I was able to take this camera with me to Hong Kong. And so thank you, Philip from the darkroom in San Clemente, California. He shipped this up to me and he shipped me a boatload of film uh, to take with me to Hong Kong on my latest trip, which has been a few months now since I've been back. And as well, uh, I shipped all the film back to him and he developed it all for me. And so thank you so much, Philip. That was most excellent. Um, I would recommend this camera for very specific types of photographers. So let's begin the review now. Okay, the first thing to note is in terms of, this is kind of, it was a weird camera in that it's technically a point and shoot because the camera can do everything for you, although there are a lot of manual overrides. You can uh, set manual exposure, manual focus, things like that. But really, this is a point and shoot. But in terms of, in terms of size, you can see this is the Leica M7. It's basic. It's it's basically the same size dimensionally. It's the same size, but in terms of weight, this is like less than half the weight. So uh, it's hard. Like around your neck, you don't feel the weight, but in terms of like you can't put this in your pocket. Um, if you think of the premium compact cameras like the T3, the Contax T3, T2, the Nikon 28 and 35 Ti, the Ricoh GR1s, like this is much bigger. And even though it's hard to tell, this is the uh, Yashica T4 Super and it is significantly smaller when you're out shooting with it. So this is, this is pocketable. You know, you can fit this inside. Okay, well maybe not this pocket, but you can fit this inside your pocket. Uh, this one you cannot, it's a little bit, I mean, this has a pop up pop out hood, but other than that, it, this is quite big. But the advantage of it being big though, is that you do have the dual um, strap lugs on either side. And it is that small little slit in there. So you can't put the ring type, the eyelets, which I prefer. So um, this is strap is by YB Putrell. So thank you YB for making this for me. And uh, you could, you know, figure out your own way putting a strap on here. Um, so you can have this around your neck and sort of carry it like it was a Leica, but a lot lighter. And it does have a 40, is it 46 mil? Yeah, 46 millimeter uh, filter thread on here. So you can put filters on, which I did in Hong Kong to overcome one of the biggest weakness of this Konica Hexar, which is maximum shutter speed is 1 250th of a second, which is pretty darn slow. And so the way to overcome it is you pop on a neutral density filter. Now this one here, it uh, it darkens everything by two stops, all right? So if you have ISO 400 film in here, it acts as if you only have ISO 100 film in here. The problem is the exposure meter is on the outside. So that's one thing you have to be careful of when you're shooting with this, to not put your finger over this part here because that's how it reads the exposure. Up here is like the autofocus portion and this here is a rangefinder light accumulator thingy here, but uh, you can't block it there. And as well, because the metering isn't through the lens through here, you have to manually override the ISO in here, which you can, you just have to, this is how you do it. In, in aperture priority mode, you press the select button until you see the ISO coming up and the default is ISO 100, and then you can go two stops well, with the ND4 filter in there, but depending on the filter, you have to manually adjust and it will keep that manual ISO until you replace the film. And so when you swap out film, then it resets and you have to go back and, and then push or pull depending on what you're trying to do. And also, let's just say during the day, it's really sunny, so you put the, the neutral density filter and at night, it's dark enough, so you know you're gonna be getting less than one to fifth of a second. And so you take it off, you can't forget to then add those two stops back. So that's something you have to kind of keep in mind to overcome that weakness of that one two fiftieth of a second maximum shutter speed. But I didn't want to shoot this camera 
during the day. Really, it was about trying to shoot it at night. With the 35 f2 lens, it is one of the brightest point and shoots uh, out there. And so with ISO 800 film f2, that's pretty much what I was using with the light. Uh, with the Leica M7 here with the 40 millimeter f2 Minolta lens and so this is giving me a 35 millimeter f2 uh, with ISO 400 so I was getting you know decent shutter speeds a 60th and 80th 1 100th of a second depending on the lighting if I was shooting at f2 and so that was something and I know embed pictures that I took using this camera using cine still 800 at night but I also took pictures in the day and one of the things that people know about this camera is of how quiet it is. Now the later models um, didn't have the styling mode button but it's easy enough to figure out. All you have to do is hold the, and just remember here, um, the manual focus button and just turn it on and you see, you see an L and the L basically means it's in quiet mode. So listen, not only does it make the film advance quieter, so it, it advances slower. Now I don't have film in here, so I can't let you hear it, but it goes quieter, but as well, autofocus is slowed down. So everything is quiet, and this is a quiet studio, so turn on. It's in L mode, okay. See how quiet that is? And even turning it on and off, you can hear that. Like that's that's on. Like it just makes it a little click. Now listen to this. This is very, this is not a slight on the Ashka T4, but all the point shoots have that weird sound, but listen how this turns on. That's, that's just normal for a film point and shoot. And this is the Konica Hexar. That's it. So this is super quiet. And if you want to shoot quietly, this 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 camera is fantastic. Now it has the full it has aperture priority, um, program mode, and manual full manual exposure control. And when it comes to the program mode, you can set your minimum uh, shutter speed so that uh, you know you can set like whatever you're good at. So let's say a thirtieth of a second, and then it'll pick the appropriate shutter speed, uh, sorry, appropriate aperture for you in program mode. You know, this is really an aperture priority type camera because really this dedicated ring up here is for for choosing your aperture, so that's nice. Uh, it does get overrided when you are in program mode. In, in shooting mode, one of the things I like as well is in the select mode, you can either be in the mode that shows you what frame number you're at. So this is at zero because there's no film in here. But when you press it again, now you're in exposure conversation and these two buttons, you can just immediately go over or under exposure conversation. So that is actually very quick. So if you're good at figuring out your exposure, you want to stay in aperture priority or in program mode, you could just quickly uh, adjust exposure uh, just by using these two little buttons here. And uh, there are other hidden features in here, very cryptic, like cameras of this generation where it doesn't really tell you what's happening in here. So when it says L, you need to know that that means it's like low speed or low mode, but it's it's the it's a silent mode, right? And so there's a little L, so you need to kind of know that. But I did say that I'd keep this video short-ish. So overall, positive 35 F2, sharp lens, uh, Reasonably light, although not compact. I like the double lug so that I can carry it around my neck. Uh, it has enough versatility. It has full manual. It has aperture priority. You can push or pull your film uh, on here, and it has a decently bright viewfinder in here. Um, minuses, I would say, is that one two fiftieth maximum shutter speed, but you can overcome that with a neutral density filter and um, pulling the the ISO, and then you have to remember to. To, to adjust for that. Um, oh, sorry, a positive as well is it does have a filter set, so you can do that, and as well as a pop out lens hood, which is nice to avoid flare. I did take a shot into the sun to see the type of flare, and this handles flare uh, very well, so I like that as well. So, um, and, and I don't like the fact that the, I wish it was TTL, that the exposure was through the lens, but instead it's through here, so you have to sort of watch that. The Nikon 28 Ti and the 35 Ti does have the uh, 3D matrix metering, so in terms of metering, the 28 Ti and the 35 Ti is much better than this. But if you are 
metering by hand or you get to know how this camera works, uh, the metering is fine. I did find that maybe about 20 percent of my shots were uh, slightly underexposed and so that's something that I would have to be mindful of and use the exposure compensation. In terms of focus, uh, this focus on this camera is faster than a camera like a 28 Ti or 35 Ti. It probably is slightly faster than the Ricoh GR1 but not as accurate. I did get more uh, misfocused images with this and so what I started doing was um, I started uh, I stopped it down to like f8, f11 if I was doing street work and then set the manual focus to about uh, six to eight feet and then just zone focus that way. And so um, don't rely on the focus. It's not horrible, but it's nothing like modern cameras or nothing like shooting with a uh, fully autofocus interchangeable lens camera type system. And so that's my review of the Konica Hexar AF Classic. I'm sending this back to the dark room and I think maybe it might show up in their camera bar in the future if you wanted to win this for anything but thank you guys again for loaning me this camera to test and thank you for the film and thank you for developing so thanks for watching and that's it happy shooting actually I should just go in silent mode right I think that's probably what I should do L N Okay, maybe that's not that quiet, but anyways, you get the picture. Mm -hmm.